comfort food at its best. A classic zesty meatloaf. Stick around, I'm finna show you how to do it. Thank y'all for stopping by the wagon today, and oh my God, bless. God has blessed us today with a beautiful day in southwest Oklahoma. Guess what day it is? It is a cowboy classic to me and my family and Shan. It is a zesty meatloaf with a honey hot sauce that goes on top. It'll put a kick in your get along, and it'll make you go. The recipe for this video and the conversion to indoor cooking will be listed right there below the video. So let's get to it because I'm ready to go. To get this going, I took two pounds of hamburger meat, three of them cackleberries, cracked it in there. Don't use a utensil, use your hands. Just get in there and go to squishing all that up till you get it mixed well. We're gonna take us some bell peppers. One of each color. I don't care if you use red, blue, green. We're gonna take a purple onion. We're gonna skin her back there and we're gonna chop it. You wanna do it in a skillet or a Dutch oven, we have put us some butter in there and let it melt and get good and going. Then we're gonna dump in our bell pepper onions. And right at the last, we're gonna go in there and put four coves of garlic that we minced with that hash knife. Stir it all, let it, the correct word, what is it? Saute. Whoa, fancy. We sauteed it till it got tender or translucent, whichever one you wanna use. And we're gonna stir in the rest of this goodness. Four teaspoons of hot sauce. Worcestershire sauce, how about? that much. A prepared horseradish, a half a cup of ketchup to go in here. We're going to season with our Red River Ranch original seasoning to taste, but you can use whatever you got there in the kitchen. So let's mix that together really well and let's let it simmer here to all them flavors get to incorporate with each other. So let's let it cool off a little bit. We're going to add us a third of a cup of cow juice. and about one to one and a half cups of breadcrumbs to get us that good binding consistency. And let's add enough till it makes a really good thick paste. Let's combine the two and mix them well together. So, if it feels a little wet to you and you think it is, you can always add just a little more breadcrumbs. I'm going to make this today in a 14 inch oven. Now, you could divide this up and make you two of them little one pounders maybe. I'm going to make me one whole loaf of meatloaf. When you cook one of these in the house, you might set it on one of them wire racks. I've used a plate, I've used like some horseshoes, but today I'm using that ever popular bumper method called the onion. Yeah, you heard me right. One of them old white onions, slice it about that thick, lay your surface in there. We gotta have a foundation for this big honking meatloaf to set on. We put that in there for one purpose. That is to keep that right off the bottom so that don't burn. That way I want everything to be able to seep around there, get some air, but also get some heat to circulate around and around. Here it is, folks. Meat loaf. Folks, we mixed up this sauce, which was ketchup, honey, hot sauce, a little horseradish. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna pour it right on top of this big honking meatloaf we are. Just layer it all on there where all that goodness can get all there. Don't that look good? Oh my gosh. Get up there and stay on the top side. Fun deal, that dog will hunt. Let's get it on a fire. Supper is fast approaching. We're cooking this on a short trivet, loaded up heavy on top, heavy coals around the outside on the bottom, but right pretty close to the edge of that Dutch oven. Now you could do this without a trivet, just broaden your circle out a little, set that on there just using the legs on the oven itself. What we're after today when we're looking at this is we started out really hot, we are. We can pull that heat away from there, but I gotta get that good brown to that hamburger meat, but I gotta get it cooked all the way through. So we're gonna stay with a pretty good amount of heat probably all the way through this till it is good and brown, but also done in the middle. You've seen that meatloaf in there. It's a big old honking piece of meat it is. So we may have to add heat to it as we go along, but we'll keep an eye on it and check it. And if we have to add, you'll be here for it. I want to remember every once in a while you got to rotate, but we had a norther blow in while we've been doing this, so we're going to rotate a little more often and keep an eye on it because that wind is fanning them coals. Woo, it is putting out some heat.
We're beginning to ash out on that windy side of our little Dutch oven. So I'm gonna put just a few more coals on that side. That way I can keep that heat pretty even and constant. So I pulled it off there, Dad. I noticed it's getting a little dark there on top. So what do we do? Knock a few of them top coals off. Don't ever be afraid to adjust that heat by either adding or taking away. You can control it even though it ain't got a knob. Heard me say we was gonna start this out on hot. We did. Now that thing sort of tapers on both ends and gets thicker in the middle just like original loaf. That's what I'm after. So I took me a meat thermometer, which I already knew because it's beginning to get firm on both ends. We're still a little soft in the middle. We're about 145 on each end. We're about 100 in the middle. So what did I do? Raised it up with a tall trivet now. We've probably been on about 25 minutes. Targeted the heat in the middle on the bottom, middle on top. That'll finish us out. You can control heat, you can target heat. So what that's really doing, folks, is just bullseyeing a complete spot. I'm trying to get that middle to go ahead and cook through. Them ends are about done. So we targeted it right in the middle, precise heat in the middle of that where it's thickest, top and bottom. Goodness to the last drop. Them onions did they job. Look here. They kept that meat from burning on the bottom. So let's give a round of applause to the onion family for sacrificing. Yes. Describe the flavors. That is some good meatloaf. You get that zestiness right there on top with that honey, that hot sauce, and that horseradish. Mm. But then you dig down in there and you get all that flavor that them bell peppers, onion, and garlic give it. Oh my gosh, folks. This is a happy meal. Why don't you tell people the story about the meatloaf? Ever since I knowed Shan, I spoil her. I love that woman more than anything in life itself. I do. And when she first come along, she couldn't cook nothing. That was fine with me. I love to cook and I love to spoil her. Been loading cattle one day, come in, got home, smelled the aroma of food in the kitchen. I'm thinking somebody must have brought some food by. Yeah. So I go in there in the kitchen and there she is, my little sweet, hard-working woman, setting it on the table, a meatloaf. Now you folks, you know sometimes when your brain kick in gear but it jumps a cog and then your butt gets to thinking first and I said these words. Boy, my mama sure made a good meatloaf. No, you said your mother made the best meatloaf. Okay, I'm glad we clarified Which is that. not the right thing to say after I just made a meatloaf. But folks, I took a bite, I did. And I said, looked up at her and I said, you know what? You ain't fooling me no more. You know how to cook. Folks, she done made a meatloaf that I claim beat my mother's and who it is good. You can eat this hot, make you something to go with it, but you know how I like it better than that? Cold meatloaf sandwich. Oh my gosh, it is good. The meatloaf dance. <clears throat> that is good. Well, folks, we hope you learned something out here in Mother Nature's kitchen. We just thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and checking out our videos. From our camp to yours, happy trails, happy cooking. God bless you each and every one, and hit that subscribe button.